What is good guys? Hello again. Welcome back or welcome if you are new here. My name is Marcello. I talk about books. In my last video I listed some of my favorite mystery novels and I kind of ham-handedly attempted to distinguish between mystery and thriller novels and I received a few comments on that video asking me if I had any thriller recommendations and uh, good news everyone, I do. So without too much preamble, here's a list of six thrillers that I read over the last like year and a half-ish that I enjoyed. So some of these might be better classed as horror thrillers or mystery thrillers. I'm not sure what constitutes like a vanilla thriller. I'm gonna leave all of the deeper genre clarifications to you guys in the comments section. These reviews are spoiler free by the way beyond simple character and plot breakdowns that you would find in any blurb online. All right so number one is Watching You by Lisa Jewell. Lisa Jewell is one of those authors that I picked up thinking that it would be kind of a schlocky beach read, what I like to refer to as tasty trash, but I found her books to be far more substantial and well written than I had anticipated. This one centers around a wealthy neighborhood in Bristol, England, and while it does open with a murder, the plot focuses much more on the oddball cast of characters, which is a staple of Lisa Jewell books, I came to find out. The protagonist's name is Tom Fitzwilliam, beloved headmaster of the local school whose image might be a little too squeaky clean. There is also his neighbor who is developing a crush on him from afar in spite of the fact that Tom is married. There's Tom's teenage son, a recluse who is obsessed with surveilling the neighborhood from his bedroom window. Tom's neighbor, a student at the local school who suspects that he may be having illicit relationships with some of her classmates, and that student's mother whose mental health has been deteriorating and who believes that Tom is stalking her. It sounds like a lot to follow, but I promise this book moves right along and was really quick to engage me, so I didn't have any problems following any of the plot lines here. My favorite part of this book is how effectively it played on the reader's expectations. The twists in this novel are effective more because they defy your assumptions and less because Lisa Jewell has played dirty tricks with her narrative, and I really appreciate that. I don't mind an unreliable narrator, for the record, but I think that there are a lot of modern third-person thrillers where the author's prose is intentionally misleading to the reader prior to the twist, and I do not find that to be very fun. Overall, this book was super enjoyable, and it sent me on a Lisa Jewell kick that led to the discovery of a few more gems, which I will probably be talking about in future videos. If you like this type of domestic drama slash murder, check this one out. Next on the list, we have Hidden Pictures by Jason Rakulak. This is a sort of supernatural mystery thriller, and while I usually do not enjoy supernatural elements in my books, I thought that this was excellent. The book follows protagonist Mallory Quinn, who has just finished a stint in rehab for addiction to painkillers, and who is starting a job as a live-in nanny for a five-year-old boy. You're gonna hear a lot of nature noises, by the way. My window is open. It's a little bit hot in here, so it kind of is what it is. Anyway, Mallory gets a job babysitting a boy. She's a live-in nanny, and this boy loves to draw. Like, typical kid stuff, usually. But one day, things take a dark turn when he draws a man in a forest, dragging a woman's lifeless body along behind him. So as time progresses, the boy's drawings get increasingly sinister, and they also change in quality to a point where it's well beyond the ability of your average five-year-old. Mallory wonders if she is being given clues to a murder, perhaps through some sort of supernatural source that is working through this boy, and she sets out to decipher the images and solve the mystery. Now, the reason that I typically do not like supernatural elements in my suspense fiction is because it's a ghost is kind of a boring reveal, and also an obvious one in supernatural fiction. It's like always a ghost. I enjoy trying to figure out what's going on, and if the answer is simply that there is weird spooky magic at play, then that doesn't really leave much to figure out. There's always the question of why the ghost is haunting a given place or whatever, but often this doesn't have enough bearing on the rest of the plot to leave me feeling like fully satisfied, if that makes sense. With all of that said, this book does not suffer from this problem at all. This is a supernatural thriller, but for me, it was about as satisfying as a good mystery novel. The plot and the pacing are this book's strong suits, and the ultimate revelations that the story provides threw me for an absolute loop. If you like supernatural thrillers, you will probably like this, and if you, like me, think that ghosts and stuff are kind of a cop-out, I say maybe give this one a shot anyway. It is almost spooky season, so maybe you'll like it. Up next, we have Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. Mr. Sager, and yes, he is a man, is kind of a hit or miss author for me, and this is my favorite of his novels. I describe Sager's books as goosebumps for adults when I talk to people about them. His main characters are all kind of interchangeable, but the books are thematic and spooky, and the prose is completely inoffensive, but also not like markedly good. Overall, they're just quick, fun reads. This one is a quick, fun read, and it is a lot of fun. It follows our main character, Jules, who has a job as an apartment setter in an extremely exclusive building on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. I think Upper West, maybe Upper East. 
I think Upper West because it's older money there. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The building is on the upper something side of Manhattan and it has all sorts of weird rules. For instance, Jules can't have guests over, like ever, and she can't spend any nights away from the apartment. But all of that seems worth it to be paid to live in such an excellent location and to be able to rub shoulders with such wealthy and well-known neighbors. Of course, as is always the case in these books, nothing is as it seems, and Jules quickly starts finding clues that there's something nefarious going on in this building. I can't really say much more than that without spoiling more than I want to, and honestly, I don't think I need to. This is a pretty simple and effective premise, and it is a simple and effective story. It will keep you engaged throughout, and it has its fair share of spookiness as well. If you like horror-tinged thrillers, and can live with substandard character development, give Sagar a spin. Lock Every Door Won't Do You Wrong, at least it was my favorite. Next on our list is Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. This is probably the best book on the list, I think. This one took me by surprise, as I was really expecting Tasty Trash when I picked it up, and instead I got a well-plotted story with true emotional depth and like solid characters. This one like moved me a little bit, and maybe it's just because I'm an emotional man now because I have a little two-year-old boy and like a two-month-old daughter. So like my emotions are just all fucked all the time. But in any case, I really enjoyed it. I can be pretty succinct with the summary here because the premise of this book is fairly simple. Main character Jen waits up for her 18-year-old son to return home one Halloween night. When she finally sees him walking home through her window, she witnesses him stab someone to death on the street outside of her house. She doesn't know who this person is, she doesn't know how her son is involved with them, but she watches him murder this person. The next morning, she wakes up and it is the day before Halloween, and the murder has not yet happened. As the book progresses, Jen keeps traveling back in time, eventually to years prior, with each day giving witness to events that ultimately led to the murder. I loved this book. I found it genuinely moving, in part because I have a young son, like I mentioned, who has turned me into an emotional landmine, but even without that, I think I would have really enjoyed it. In a genre full of copy-paste novels that feel like they may have been written by AI, this is a real standout. If you read any book on this list, probably pick this one up. It's really good. And in spite of its emotional depth, it is very readable. Last on the list, I would like to talk about Don't Believe It by Charlie Donlea. I have no idea how to pronounce this person's name. This one does not pack the emotional punch of Wrong Place, Wrong Time, nor the depth of a Lisa Jewell novel, but it was just a fun read. This is another mystery thriller centered on protagonist Susan. Susan is a documentary filmmaker producing a true crime series about a woman named Grace Siebold who has spent the last decade in an overseas prison for the murder of her boyfriend. Obviously, as Susan interviews the cast of characters, various secrets come to light, all leading to a conclusion that I really liked. What I enjoyed about this book is that this is a real mystery thriller, in that Charlie Donlea strategically places clues throughout the book in such a way that a discerning reader might actually be able to solve the mystery on their own as they read it. It still has all of the hallmarks of your like standard twisty thriller, as people call them these days, but it is a fair play mystery, and I really enjoyed that. I was not able to crack it, but it was a lot of fun trying, and I did get like half of it. I think this element of fair play, or at least what I'm referring to as fair play, gets lost in a lot of modern books that call themselves mystery thrillers. With us being entirely beholden to the narrative in some books to reveal what's actually going on, in an age where the unreliable narrator is almost par for the course in this genre, this is super refreshing. This book wasn't groundbreaking, but it was thoroughly enjoyable and probably is like my second tier recommendation. If you're gonna read two books on this list, read Wrong Place, Wrong Time, and then read this one. And that is our list. Please understand that these views are subjective, and if you have recommendations for me based on what you've seen here, please leave them in the comments section. I am but one man. I can only read so much and so fast. I'm also a full-time caregiver to a toddler, and I'm gonna be a full-time caregiver to a toddler and a two-month-old in like two weeks. I have audiobooks. I know some people don't think that it's reading, but it's all, it's all I've got right now. So I will get through all of your recommendations. Um, they're all being put on a list, and I am slowly making my way through. If you like this video, there will be more lists like this to come. Please feel free to subscribe, and let me know in the comments if there is a type of video that you would like me to do next. Thank you for watching. See you soon.